Good evening students. Today we will be discussing about acromotor nerve. So it is the third cranial nerve. So there are approximately 24,000 fibers. Components, somatomotor fibers. These are the general somatic efferent fibers which supply inferior rectus, inferior oblique, medial rectus, superior rectus and elevator palpebral superioris. These are the five muscles out of the seven extraocular muscles. The two, are, two other muscles like superior oblique and uh, lateral rectus. Superior oblique will be supplied by the trochlear nerve, whereas lateral rectus will be supplied by the abducent nerve. And there are also proprioceptive afferents from extra from these extraocular muscles. And there is general visceral efferent, so for pupillary and accommodation reflex. So these are uh, supplying the sphincter pupilla and ciliaris muscle. You can see here. So these are the extraocular muscles. You can see this is the superior division of the oculomotor nerve. Supplying the levator palpebral superioris and superior rectus, and this is the inferior division of acromotor nerve, supplying the medial rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique. And here you can see this is the abducent nerve supplying the lateral rectus, and here you can see the trochlear nerve supplying the superior oblique. So acromotor nuclear complex location at the level of superior colliculus of midbrain in the ventromedial part of the periaqueductal central gray matter. So these are the following components, namely the dorsolateral nucleus, which is meant to supply inferior rectus muscle, intermediate nucleus supplying inferior oblique muscle, ventromedial nucleus supplying medial rectus muscle, median raphe nucleus supplying superior rectus muscle, caudal central nucleus supplying levator palpebral superioris. So Edinger Westphal nucleus, so this gives preganglionic parasympathetic fibers to sphincter pupilla and ciliaris muscle. You can see here, this is the ventromedial nucleus, this is the intermediate nucleus, this is the dorsolateral nucleus and you can see edinger westphal nucleus in relation to the dorsolateral nucleus. So these nuclei, these four nuclei are present on both sides. So and here if you see in the midline, this is the median raphe nucleus and caudal central nucleus. <coughs> central connections, so corticonuclear fibers, so they come from motor cortex of the cerebrum. Then medial longitudinal fasciculus. So this connects the third cranial nerve with four, six, eighth cranial nerves. Helps in coordination of eye movements. And then tectobulbar tract connected to visual cortex has visual protective reflex. Then pretectile nucleus of both sides concerned with direct and indirect light reflex. These are the central connections of the oculomotor nuclear complex. So course relations and distribution. So origin is from the oculomotor nuclear complex from the midbrain. Then they pass through the tegmentum of midbrain, red nucleus and substantia nigra. Then they lie on, then they lie on the sulcus on medial side of the basis pedunculae, otherwise called cross cerebri. You can see here. So from the oculomotor nuclear complex origin passing through the tegmentum of midbrain, red nucleus almost close to the substantia nigra. Then it lies on the medial side of the um, basis pedunculae. Then it passes between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. Then it pierces the acromotor trigone and passes in relation to the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. At the anterior end of cavernous sinus, it divides into superior and inferior division, and both the divisions will pass through the common tendinous ring of Zin separated by the nasociliary nerve. And you can see the superior division ends by supplying the superior rectus and levator palpebral superioris, whereas inferior division will supply the inferior rectus, inferior oblique, and medial rectus. So the branch which is going to inferior oblique will give a communicating branch to the ciliary ganglia. So <clears throat> this after emerging from uh, midbrain, so it passes through the interpeduncular system between posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery, accompanies the lateral side of posterior communicating artery, pierces the meningeal layer of dura mater in acclomotor trigone lateral to posterior glenoid process, passes forward in lateral wall of cavernous sinus. Here it is related below with the trochlear nerve, ophthalmic nerve and maxillary nerves. So nerve divides into superior and inferior rami in anterior part of the cavernous sinus. Enters orbit through common tendinous ring of superior orbital fissure. Here both divisions are separated by nasociliary nerve. So superior ramus passes forward and upward, lateral to optic nerve, supplies superior rectus and levator palpebral superioris. Inferior ramus divides into three branches, one for medial rectus, one for inferior rectus, one for inferior oblique. So this branch to inferior oblique also provides a communicating branch to ciliary ganglia, parasympathetic root. So communications in the cavernous sinus, it communicates with sympathetic plexus around internal carotid artery. It also communicates with the ophthalmic nerve. 
So this is very important because proprioceptive sensations from extraocular muscles will pass through ocular motor nerve and within the cavernous sinus, these fibers are transferred to ophthalmic nerve. So they pass through trigeminal ganglion without interruption and reach the mesencephalic nucleus in the midbrain. So in the orbit, ciliary ganglion, so postganglionic cell station for parasympathetic fibers. So what happens when the ocular motor nerve is damaged? It results in ptosis because paralysis of levator palpebra superioris. Then external strabismus or squint because medial rectus muscle is paralyzed and there will be an opposite action of lateral rectus. And dilated and fixed pupil because sphincter pupil is gone. And there is loss of accommodation because ciliary muscle is also gone. And then protrusion of eyeball due to paralysis of ocular muscles and there is diplopia. Thank you.